So today we're going to cover chapter 11, section 4. Today we're going to learn about three-dimensional figures. So the first thing we're going to do is define what a polyhedron is. And a polyhedron is just a solid that is bounded by polygons called faces. We're going to be able to identify the faces, the edges, and the vertices of our polyhedron. So the edges are just going to be the segment that is formed by the intersection of two faces. A vertex is the intersection point of three or more edges. The plural form of the word polyhedron is polyhedra or polyhedrons. When we go to name these solids, we're going to use the name of the base to name it. So, and what you're gonna look for, they're not always gonna be sitting on their bases. So in this particular picture here, this is actually a prism, and more specifically, the shape that you have two of, there are two trapezoids here, and it's not sitting on its base, but this is an example of a trapezoidal prism. So these are some types of solids. The blue shapes are polyhedra. Notice the sides or the faces are all polygons. So we're going to see coming up when we talk about the definition of a prism and a pyramid, we're going to specifically name the type of prism or the type of pyramid. Now, in the top picture here, we don't know anything about any kind of congruency marks. So more specifically, this would be an example of a rectangular prism. And then the same thing for the pyramid. I don't have any congruency marks, so I can't say that this is a square pyramid. So this one would also be a rectangular pyramid. Again, you're gonna name these solids based on the shape of the base. Now, when our solids have curved sides, they're not polyhedrons or not polyhedra. So um, we can give them specific names though. We have a cylinder here that's pictured, a cone and a sphere, but they're not polyhedrons because they have curved sides. So when we go to name a prism, we're going to use the shape of the base to name it. Now, not always are our prisms going to be sitting on their bases. Sometimes they're sitting on a side. So what you're going to look for is the shape that you have two of. So notice I've got a pentagon on the top and on the bottom here. So this one is actually sitting on its base, and this would be an example of a pentagonal prism. Notice my lateral faces or the sides of this prism. They're all parallelograms. They look like they're rectangles, but technically remember a rectangle is a parallelogram. So the lateral faces of a prism are gonna be parallelograms and they're gonna be connecting the vertices of the bases. We'll also be able to identify the height of our prism and remember the height is always gonna be a perpendicular distance. So it'll be the perpendicular distance between the two bases. What we'll be looking for to indicate that it is perpendicular is we're gonna be looking for the right angle. And that will indicate that that is our altitude or our height. And again, remember your bases are gonna be congruent polygons. And in this particular picture, I have congruent pentagons. So for the pyramid, it, again, we're gonna name the pyramid based on the shape of the base. So it's a polygon with n number of sides and n number of lateral faces that are all gonna meet up at a vertex. The altitude is gonna be the segment that goes from the vertex perpendicular to the base. So it's actually gonna go straight down the middle of the pyramid. And that would be the height of our pyramid. Now we're also gonna be seeing some slant heights and they'll be the heights that are down the sides of our lateral faces. So again, we're gonna be bringing back 
a lot of chapter nine knowledge. We'll be doing Pythagorean theorem. We'll be doing special right triangles. So again, to name a pyramid, just like a prism, you're gonna name it using the shape of the base. So in this particular picture, I don't see any congruency marks. So again, I can't tell if this is a square or not. So again, I would just name this as a rectangular pyramid. So the lateral faces are all the triangle sides when it's a pyramid. The next slide is a theorem. It's not in our textbook. Um, this was a theorem that I had taught previous to this textbook. Um, it's just a little tool that you could use to double check your counts. So the theorem states that you could take the number of faces, add that to the number of vertices, and that should equal the number of edges plus two. Um, I will not test you on Euler's theorem. If you choose to use it to check your counts, it's a tool that you could use. So this is similar to what I just showed you with the tissue box. This thing that's pictured here, it looks like it's a cube, but I don't know anything about the lengths of the edges. So this one would also be a rectangular prism. And just like I showed you, there are six faces, a top, a bottom, a left and a right side, and a front and a back. So six faces. And then we have eight vertices. So the vertices are the pointy corners where three edges intersect. So I have eight of these. And then I also have 12 edges. And the edges are the segments that connect those vertices or the intersection of the two faces. And I have 12 of these. So I have four um, connecting the top and the bottom and then four around the top and four around the bottom. So a total of 12. And if I decided to use Euler's theorem, I would add faces plus vertices. So six plus eight is 14. And that should equal edges plus two, which it does. So it's a little tool that you could use to check that you did count your faces, edges, and vertices correctly. So in this example, it wants us to first decide, is this solid a polyhedron? If it is, we need to name it. And then we need to find the number of faces, vertices, and edges. So my first picture here, notice the congruency marks around that base, indicating that that base shape is a square. And notice that all of those lateral faces, those triangles, are all meeting at that common vertex at the top. So because my base shape is a square, this is an example of a square pyramid. Again, you're gonna name it based off of the base shape. So in this, I've got five faces. I've got four lateral triangle faces and then one square base. So a total of five faces. Then I could count my vertices. The vertices are one at the top and then four around the base. So a total of five vertices. And then my edges, they are the intersection of the faces. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. Now, when they're drawing these three-dimensional figures, the dotted lines are gonna be um, lines that maybe might be behind. So they're sort of like hidden. So I've got eight edges. So if I wanted to use Euler to check, remember the formula is faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. So five faces, five vertices, eight edges, five plus five is 10, eight plus two is 10. So the counts that I got for faces, edge, and vertices are correct. So the next solid that's pictured here, notice it's got a curved side. So this would be not a polyhedron because a polyhedron 
the sides or the faces must be polygons. And when you have a curved edge or side, it's not a polyhedron. This sort of looks like it might be half of a cylinder or maybe not even a cylinder because it's not perfectly shaped. So this one's not a polyhedron. Now, here's where they're trying to trick us. So on the last example here, remember to name the polyhedron. This is a polyhedron because all of the sides are polygons. However, it's not sitting on its base. The base is whatever shape you have two congruent polygons for. So notice I've got a triangle face here and another triangle here. So this is actually an example of a triangular prism. More specifically, notice the right angle. It's actually a right triangular prism. But if on the test you just told me triangular prism, I would give you credit for that. Now, the other faces are polygon, are parallelograms. They actually look like they're rectangles. And notice I've got a rectangle face here. Then I've got one here on the bottom. And then I've got one here on the back side. So again, you name it based on the polygon shape that you have two of. I've got three parallelograms, so I would not call this a rectangular prism. Even though it looks like it's sitting on a rectangle, they trick you and they lay it on its side. So this is actually laying on its side. So this has got five faces. There are two triangle faces and three parallelograms or three rectangles. So then if I go to count my vertices now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. And then now I'll count my edges. Get a different color here, maybe green. Okay, so now let's do pink because it'll probably show up better. So let's count the edges. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges. And if you want to use Euler's, remember you take faces plus vertices is equal to edges plus two. So five plus six equals nine plus two. Five plus six is 11. Nine plus two is 11. So these counts are good. Again, I'm not gonna test you on Euler's. If you choose to use it, you can. Next, we're gonna see the definition of cross-section, do an example, and then we're done. So a cross-section is going to be the intersection of a plane that's slicing through a solid. Now on my slides, all of the cross-sections, those shapes, those polygons, are going to be in purple. On the test, it's not in color, so you're going to look for the different shading. It'll be like a darker color gray. So here, they've got a pyramid. And more specifically, notice the shape on my base here is a triangle. So this would be an example of a triangular pyramid. And when I took that red plane and I sliced it through the top of that pyramid, notice if I were to pick up that piece and look at it, the cross-section shape would be a triangle. So my cross section, when this specific plane slices through it, the cross section is a triangle. Now, we could end up getting different shapes depending on where they slice it. And we're gonna see that on the next slide. And then the last example. Now, all four of the first examples, A, B, C, and D, these are all gonna be cubes. Even though they don't have congruency marks, 
A, B, C, and D are all cubes. And then we're gonna identify what the cross section figure is once we slice it and we change the, the direction of that plane. So for example 2A, when they took that red plane and then did a cross section horizontally, notice that purple shape in there is gonna be a square. Because if all sides are the same because this is a cube, that cross section horizontally is a square. Now, if they didn't tell me that this was a cube, if I didn't start out by saying that this was a cube, you could say that that's a rectangle if we didn't know all those edges were congruent. Now, when we take that plane and slice through that cube diagonally, now my cross section is a rectangle. And then if they try to slice through the cube, not so much directly diagonally, but maybe more at a different angle, now this shape is a trapezoid. And then if they try to do a cross section through the corner, then my cross section, that purple, is a triangle. And then the last figure, it's not a polyhedron, but it is a solid, and this solid is a cone. And when they try to do a cross section through that tip of that cone, we can see that that cross section shape is going to be a circle. What we were looking at here is the purple, and that would have been the shape that we would see if we were to split and divide that solid at that plane where it slices it.